Hello and welcome to Play On, the Morgan Sports Law podcast. I'm Donna Bartley, a Senior Associate at Morgan Sports Law, and today I'll be hosting the discussion on litigation funding. As some of you may know, Morgan Sports Law recently launched a bespoke litigation funding facility in partnership with Harbour Litigation Funding, which is the largest privately owned dedicated litigation and arbitration funder in the world. In this episode of the podcast, we'll be discussing details of that facility. Today, I'm joined by two of my colleagues, William Sternheimer, a partner in Elder Zanacliffe, and Barrister Nick Williams. We're also joined by our special guest, Diego Gouveia, an Associate Director of Litigation Funding at Harbour. Thank you to you all for joining me today. Let's get straight into the questions. So to start with you, Diego, can you tell us a bit about what litigation funding is? Hi, Donna, and thanks for having me um, on the podcast today as well. Getting straight to the question then, what is litigation funding? Well, funding is really very straightforward. Litigation funders basically are third parties that invest in the outcome of claims, so legal disputes. And what we do is we pay the legal bills, all of them or some as you, as a client may wish, uh, until a case concludes either through settlement, whether a trial or maybe through arbitration proceedings or even appeals. And uh, the idea is that if the case is settled and if it wins, and if monies are collected from the losing party, so from the person you're going up against, then the funder, so we will recover the capital investment that we've made, and we'll also um, take a a pre-agreed share of the proceeds in return. And on the opposite side of the coin, if the claim is unsuccessful, then litigation funding is what's known as non-recourse, which means that the litigation funder bears the cost of the litigation entirely. So there's no repayment of its investment uh, by the claimant. And in this particular instance, as you mentioned, we've you know made the facility with Morgan Sports Law. The idea here is that we've pre-agreed the provision of monies to Morgan Sports Law so that its clients can use on the cost of bringing specific types of claims. And we'll get more into this in, you know, with a bit more detail later. But they relate mainly to claims from players against clubs in the FIFA uh, DRC, so uh, Dispute Resolution Center, and the other two can correct me if I'm wrong in terms of that name, but in relation specifically to the termination of contracts and unpaid wages. And so, Nick, from a client's perspective, why is using litigation funding different to their lawyers acting on a no-win, no-fee conditional fee agreement? So a no-win, no-fee conditional fee agreement with a lawyer as you will know, Donna, is an agreement where the lawyer says that unless you are successful in your case, you don't have to pay my costs. But what it doesn't cover, and what third-party funding does cover, is disbursements. And for, in particular, CAS appeals, those disbursements can be quite significant. So if you are a player pursuing an appeal at the CAS, you might have to pay arbitration costs of somewhere between 30,000 and 60,000 Swiss francs if you are going to be bringing your appeal to the CATS. Under a CFA with your lawyer, those costs you would have to pay irrespective of whether your claim wins or loses. So you'd have to find that money and pay it if you want to proceed. Under a third party funding agreement, those costs are paid by the funder. So it's effectively a more complete solution for a client who wants to bring a claim and wants the costs of that claim to be paid for, and it it covers everything. So in the case that the the claim loses, the tab for that is still picked up by the funder, whereas under a CFA, a player might still find themselves on the hook. The other important thing that third-party funding can cover, which a CFA won't, is adverse costs. Now, although costs aren't an issue in DRC proceedings, they are at least to a limited extent in the CATS. You can have awards of arbitration costs being made against someone and sometimes small, or in some cases, larger awards of legal costs being made. And again, that is all covered by the funder. If you enter into a funding agreement under a CFA, it would be the player who would end up on the hook for those things. Then I can jump in because I know you're going to be asking Jogo some questions, but just coming back quickly on what Nick has been saying about arbitration costs, Obviously, when a player comes to us and has limited financial means already to cover the legal fees, 
this player will also have limited means in order to cover for the arbitration costs. And in those circumstances, the player is bound basically to apply for the appointment of a sole arbitrator in order to pay the minimum arbitration costs possible. And obviously, having a case decided by a sole arbitrator is different than having a case decided by three arbitrators. And in terms of strategies, many clients come to us saying, I prefer a three-member panel, but I don't have the means to pay for a three-member panel. And obviously, litigation funding will have a real interest in those circumstances where the fund will be able to cover for the arbitration costs for three arbitrators rather than having an obligation to go directly to a sole arbitrator. So really it provides more certainty around costs, but also opens up options in terms of the strategy for the case. Exactly. And Diego, can I come to you on this as well? Yeah, sure. I, I mean, I think the other two have covered very much what the benefits of litigation funding are. I think the only thing I'll add is some of the other aspects in relation to it. So even though a litigation funder will, will pay for your legal costs, uh, what we won't do is interfere in the relationship that you have with your law firm. And so throughout your claim, your point of contact will continue to be them. You'll instruct them and they'll carry out the work as required. So you'll have full control of the conduct, the conduct of the litigation or the key decisions that need to be made are made by the client and, and the law firm together, not the funder. The only thing that, as a funder will require under the contract is, you know, we'll have a, a provision that basically encourages a claimant to act commercially and not to reject sound settlement offers. But again, the, that specific main decision will still be left up to the client and Morgan Sports Law to get that. The only other thing is we'll want to make sure that we know how the claims are generally progressing, but we will deal directly with Morgan Sports Law on that. So we'll, we'll request a monthly report. And we just ask for your permission under the contract that uh, you agree to to them providing that information. But otherwise, authentication funding is very much hands off. Once we agree to provide the funding, we'll do so. We'll pay your fees and we'll be quiet and and let you get on with things. Thank you. And um, William, as someone who's heavily involved in the firm's football dispute, can you tell us what types of cases are eligible for litigation funding through the Morgan Sports Law Harbour facility? So basically, the, the facility covers claims from uh, players against clubs before the FIFA Dispute Resolution Chamber, the FIFA DRC. Just to explain very briefly, but the cases that are brought, the claims brought before the FIFA DRC are disputes of an international dimension, which means basically that you have a player from one nationality and a player from another. And those claims are in relation to the termination of contracts and more specifically unpaid wages. Obviously, you know, because we, we touched upon CAS, those cases can be appealed to CAS, so litigation funding would also apply to the further appeals to CAS. So that's in terms of the object of the claims. The claims, in order to be eligible for litigation funding, must present a reasonable chance of success. So this is, uh, this is something that us at MSL will be reviewing the documents on deciding whether the claim has or hasn't a reasonable chance of success. And one of the other conditions, I would say, is that the claim must be sufficiently valuable in relation to the costs in will, including the costs of funding. And that means that it's litigation funding will only be proposed or and will only be appropriate where a player will still be left with the majority of the damages. It doesn't make sense that the player will end up with less than half of what he or she is entitled to after the claim is, is successful. So that's, that's the, in principle, the object of the facility. But obviously, other cases may be eligible on a case-by-case -case basis. So it could potentially cover claims by coaches against clubs, players against agents, agents against players. So yeah, the, the, the agreement in principle is, again, for players against clubs, but any types of disputes can be assessed and, and we will decide together with Harbour whether litigation funding is an option or not for the, those specific cases. Okay, and then perhaps I could come to you first on this next one too, William. Can you tell us why Morgan Sports Law decided there was a space in a market for a facility like this? So yeah, for, for us at MSL, we see the facility between our firm and, and Harbour as an important tool in facilitating access to justice. When we reviewed the statistics, we saw that there are 
around 800 claims that brought to the before the PIPA DRC every year. And we know both from personal experience, but also by looking at the statistics that the majority of those which proceed to a determination by the DRC are successful. So I'll decided in favor of the buyers. Most of these claims feature a solid core claim for unpaid salary, which leads basically to the termination of a contract and so a claim for unpaid wages in addition to a claim for compensation. But very often, and this is what we touched upon a little bit earlier, players with these claims are often in a, in a precarious financial position and they face pressure from clubs to settle for lower amounts and if the player does not agree, the club will drag things in order to increase the pressure on the player's resources by making them spend legal fees. So if they're going to delay the proceedings before FIFA, you're going to, and the player will end up with a positive decision at FIFA, but the player will end up further appealing to the CAS, even potentially not to pay the arbitration costs and having the termination order, but then you lose, you know, the player will lose an additional two to three months before even being able to enforce the final decision before the competent bodies. So having funding for, for those fees helps mitigate that pressure for the player and will, we hope, help more players get what they are entitled to and, and quicker. And we also know from having taken a number of these cases at CAS level that players are not always getting the best representation of first instance before the PIPA DRC. And we suspect that one of the main reasons for that is that players who have not been paid are choosing low costs over high quality legal representation. What must be stressed is that what you present as arguments before the FIPA DRC, although they do not bind you afterwards at CAS, but are still very important because it's going to be very hard if you have a firm like us coming in, just in, you know, coming in the case, but just at the CAS level to basically change the whole arguments and be able to explain why we have decided to change the whole argument. So it does make sense for players to have a coherent line of arguments from day one. Uh, and this is why I think it makes sense and it would make sense for players to have the same rules uh, in the first place. And this is why also we thought that there was a space to offer litigation funding for players with limited financial means to be able to hire us from the beginning. So the earlier you can get to a sort of workable facility on funding, the better in terms of assisting you to, to run your case going forwards. Exactly. And Nick, is there anything you'd like to add to this? Well, as William said, we thought there was a gap in the market for a product like this that would allow a player to instruct a firm like MSL from day one of their claim. And Harbour we saw as pretty much the ideal strategic partner to do something like this. They are very well regarded. They operate internationally. As far as litigation funders go, they are top of the pile. And I think from our perspective, something that, that we really liked about them, that we thought was quite important, is they're not just a funder who funds large-scale commercial actions. They are a funder who will take on the socially important case class actions and um, claims such as that which was brought against the Montar you know, oil platform operators by Indonesian seaweed farmers. They don't just focus on purely the big money claims. It's it's a broader spectrum of things that they like to engage with. And we thought that they would find a project like this, a uh, project which is aimed at helping players, really interesting. Diego, what was Harbour's thinking on it? I mean, from our perspective, I'll reiterate the points already mentioned by, by William. Access to justice and bringing equality of arms to the players is something that we see as, as quite important because, you know, uh, well-resourced uh, defendants will typically try to wear down the claimants in order to force them to settle for a low amount or even, as has been mentioned, not pay at all. And so we believe that with our backing, you know, a claimant can get much better value, shall I say, but well, proper justice from the claims which they ultimately bring. And hopefully if a defendant knows that a funder has looked into the claim and decided that it's one that they're willing to back, you know, that's a, an additional reason for, for taking the claim seriously from, from their side. In terms of why we did Root Morgan Sports Law, again, we found them to be a very reputable and innovative law firm. 
with lawyers and including William here, who have really good experience working in the space. William, for example, having been at the CAS for, for 10 years and overseen more than 700 football related arbitrations and even more arbitrations than that. You can't get a much better CV than that. So, um, yeah, for us to be, you know, perfect partners to do this with. And William, so to get into the practicalities then, if I'm a client who wants to use litigation funding, what does the application process for the Morgan Sports Law Harbour facility look like? So I'll try to, to take those step by step. So the player has basically an employment related dispute against his club or her club and expresses an interest in litigation funding for the claim. Obviously, if the player comes to us, even without being aware of litigation funding, we would suggest litigation funding if it is a, an option. But then, so he comes to us with the claim, he or she comes to us with the claim, and MSO will, will assess that claim to evaluate the chances of success of the matter and the suitability for funding generally. As I said earlier, we won't suggest funding if for any reason we'll realize that the player might end up with nothing remaining. So we will suggest funding if it is suitable for the player. If funding is an appropriate option for the player, we will, with the player's permission of course, provide Harbour with all the details of the dispute. Harbour will then confirm the terms on which it will be willing to fund the player's claim. The player then has the choice, the option to decide whether to proceed with funding, in which case he or she will sign a funding agreement with Harbour, and the retainer with MSL. If for whatever reason the player decides not to use funding, he or she is still free to instruct MSL on a different basis. Obviously, funding is an option. And then, as we, we said earlier, presents many advantages, especially in terms of covering the, the disbursements, in particular arbitration costs, which are very expensive. But obviously, it's, it's always an option and the player may ultimately decide that another option is best for him or for her. So that's how it goes step by step on our side. Okay. And Diego, how do things work from Harbour's perspective? So from our perspective, uh, as William mentioned, we, we, you know, we'll get a, a report from them in, in terms of the claim. And the, as I've also mentioned previously, uh, this is a pre-agreed facility for these types of cases and the harbour has already uh, sufficiently acquainted itself and satisfi satisfied itself that we're happy to fund these sorts of claims, the claims that they were, we're happy to back. And so we've already worked with uh, Morgan Sports Law on simplifying processes and our funding agreement to make it as, as seamless and as expedient as possible for the players. So once we get that report, we already have a, a template funding agreement in mind. And if we're happy to take on the claim, it's literally as simple as, as putting that you know, pen to paper on the signature and Morgan Sports Law can start working for you. Great. And so finally then, to wrap things up, who should people get in touch with if they're interested in finding out more? The main contact will be me. So players are, are obviously free to contact me directly on my on my email, mobile. We are always very efficiently replying. So whenever there's an interest or qu further questions about litigation funding, they can send it to me and we'll pass on if, if there's anything to be discussed with Arbor and but we'll be interacting with the with the players and answering any questions they have. Well, thanks everyone and particularly thank you to Diego for taking the time to chat to us today. For more information on the funding facility, check out its dedicated page on our website at morgansl.com forward slash en forward slash litigation dash funding. This page also links to our main website, morgansl.com, where you'll find lots more information about the firm's sports disputes practice. If you'd like to join our mailing list, or if there are topics that you'd like us to cover on future podcasts, please email us at podcast at morgansl.com. Finally, Please connect with us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram and Facebook for articles, updates and news. Thank you for listening and we hope you'll join us again for future episodes of Play On.